I mean, using the D is always fun. If you have a girlfriend or wife, you know how fun it is to use the D. <laughs> this time without <laughs> smacking right into the chalkboard and hitting the ground after that. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I did this quite well, I must say so myself. We are going to take a look at yet another Fibonacci thing. I don't know why I like it in less time, but I like making videos on that. And have you ever asked yourself what would happen if we were to take our Fibonacci boy, so y squared minus y minus one being equal to zero and kind of upgrade it to the French equation, meaning the second derivative of y minus the first derivative of y minus y being equal to zero. Okay, I hope you can see the similarities. Okay, so this is the zero of derivative. We are upgrading it to a differential equation. And what is going to be the solution? This is what we are going to find out today. But before we get into the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, iSkySoft, the creators of PDF Element Pro, for sponsoring this episode of Fibonacci Fun yet again. PDF Element Pro is an app available for Windows and Mac which allows you to edit PDF files freely, making it a must-have tool that everyone should have at their hands. Some of the features that I use regularly include annotating a PDF and use the built-in flattening option to merge annotations and a PDF file, convert PDFs into various other file types and the option to protect your PDF files in various different ways. Features that I really like to use out of the protect section up there next to the home screen are the signature and redaction options before publishing and sharing documents publicly. Also, do not miss out on the graph editing, picture saving and page rearrangement options. I also recently posted a blog post on my main homepage papaflemmy.engineer, you can find the link down there in the description where I feature PDF Element Pro. So if you want to know more about the features of PDF Element Pro, pros and cons about this program, take a look into the description there, you can find a link to the blog post. So if this feels like it's something for you, if you think that such a great PDF editor could benefit your life, could benefit your studies whatsoever, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can get 50% of the product. Such a great deal, just half the price for this amazing product. So check it out, try out PDF Element Pro, support the channel this way and now we are going to dive into the main video. So, we are promoting our Fibonacci numbers to a differential equation, okay? Our Fibonacci polynomial. Now, how could we start with this? Okay, let's say that all those y's are with respect to t, okay? Just to make things clear. And yeah, you could, you, uh, you could solve it using an ansatz, blah, 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 but we would like to continue differently today. We would like to give this thing the d, okay? We are going to smack the d right into this differential equation's face. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look into my differential equation playlist. There you can find all the information about the big old D. Okay? Now, this thing is equivalent to saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to make an implication out of that. D squared y minus dy minus y is equal to zero. And as you might notice, y is a common factor from the right, basically, okay? We, we have the identity here. I'm going to leave the identity out of this. We are just going to treat the identity in the reals like it's a one, okay? Then d squared minus d minus one, or the identity times y is equal to zero. You shouldn't say times y. You should better say of y, okay? We are applying this differential operator that we have here to this y. Now, as before, we are going to treat our differential operator that we have here like a polynomial of the second degree. And we are going to decompose it into its linear factors, basically. Now, that's a pretty famous polynomial, okay? I have written it on the chalkboard before. This is just a polynomial, basically, that is going to give you the Fibonacci numbers, okay? So, the, the golden ratio and its conjugate, basically, little brother. So this thing overall is nothing but d minus phi, where phi is the golden ratio, times d minus phi conjugate. This is just the golden ratio, but with a negative sign in front of the square root of five, basically, of y is equal to zero. Now we are going to make use of the shift theorem. Why am I using, uh, or why am I doing it like this? Well, 
just because it's way more rigorous than using just the, the ansatz. The ansatz is just guessing, but with this method you can actually make everything rigorous, okay, for this little ansatz to work. Now we are going to introduce a little substitution. Let y be equal to, okay, we are going to make it equal to some other function with respect to t, we are going to call it um, regular phi, not this well, phi that we are using here, just regular phi, phi, I'm going to uh, say phi to this thing, okay? And also we would like to get rid of this first root that we have here, um, conjugate of our golden ratio. Now we are going to get rid of it by multiplying our phi by the factor e to the first root, so phi conjugate times t. Okay, this is also where this ansatz basically comes from all the time. I just want to give you guys a little, a little refresher here. Okay, this is the point of the video. Now we can actually plug this in, meaning our differential equation it does nothing but d minus phi, d minus phi conjugate, and then e to the phi conjugate t times phi being equal to zero. And well, now we are going to make use of the shift theorem. Like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look um, into my differential equations playlist. There you can find all the information. Shift theorem tells us that we are basically going to take this e factor, put it completely to the front, but then we have to put phi conjugate times t into each of those linear factors. We are going to add it. We are going to eliminate this root at first and then this root one after another. Meaning after using the shift theorem, we are going to get e to the phi conjugate t d minus phi plus phi conjugate times d minus phi conjugate plus phi conjugate times phi being equal to zero. As you might notice, this is going to cancel out. And what we now have here is just, well, the differential of our phi. Now we are going to introduce a new substitution by the same means as we did here. We are going to say, let d phi Okay, we are not defying anything, we are going to do d phi this time. d phi is nothing but some other function with respect to t, we are going to call it phi 1, and also e to the t times this root that we have right here. So we want to eliminate this new root that we have in here, e to the, okay, this is going to give us phi minus phi conjugate times t. I hope you can even read this. Can you read this? Yeah, you should be able to read all of this, okay? Never mind, I'm saying all of this. Now we can plug it into here and use the shift theorem yet again. By applying the shift theorem, we are going to take this factor, put it to the front and, and add it into this thing that we have right here. I'm going to write everything out. After using the shift theorem, I'm plugging this new substitution into here. We are going to get e phi conjugate times t, e to the phi minus phi conjugate times t, d minus golden ratio plus little brother of golden ratio plus golden ratio minus little brother of golden ratio times phi1 being equal to zero or of phi1. And as you might notice, here comes the magic in. All of this is going to cancel out. What we have in here is simply d phi1. Also, what you might notice is by using the function the equation of the exponential function, we have phi or phi conjugate t minus phi conjugate t, this and that is going to cancel out. I'm going to write everything out that we now have and then we can resubstitute and then we are basically done. Meaning overall we are going to have e to the negative, no to the phi t, I'm terribly sorry, um, and then d phi 1. This is what we have at the moment. Well, all of this equal to zero. Hmm, there's certainly nothing we can do now. It's a little reference to John Epic Math Time. Check out his channel, it's a pretty brilliant channel. Our exponential function is never equal to zero. We can multiply by the multiplicative inverse on both sides, getting rid of that. And now we can simply plug in our definition for phi1 and then we can continue from this point onwards. Now, what is phi1? Phi1 is nothing but this exponential function and multiplicative inverse multiplied on both sides times the derivative of phi, okay? Meaning overall, and this right here after, uh, after resubstituting is nothing but the differential, okay? D, the differential with respect to t of, okay, phi one, but phi one is nothing but, okay, let me see. This is e to the phi conjugate minus phi times t, d of phi. And all of this is equal to zero. 
Okay, I hope you can see where this came from. Now we can proceed and simply integrate both sides, getting rid of this differential operator. I mean, in integration is just the inverse operation, basically, okay, to, to say it in, in layman's terms of our differentiation. So we are going to integrate both sides with respect to t. We are going to end up with some constant. I'm going to call it c1, for example. Meaning overall, after integration, we have e to the phi conjugate minus phi t d phi is equal to some constant c1. And well, all that's really left to do is, okay, at first we could possibly multiply both sides by this factor. This is something we can do. We are going to do this right now. So before resubstituting the last thing, e to the so multiplicative inverse going to cancel out e to the phi t um, phi minus phi conjugate times t. And now we are going to end up with d phi. Last thing to do is resubstitute this. What is our phi exactly? Phi is nothing but e to the negative phi conjugate t times y. Okay. So this is d e to the um, negative phi conjugate times t times y. Okay, exactly. Being equal to c1 e to the phi minus phi conjugate times t. And now, all that's really left to do is to integrate both sides and then multiply by this factor and then we are basically done. Integrating both sides with respect to t is going to get rid of the differential operator on this side. Integrating both sides with respect to t is going to give us c1 over phi minus phi conjugate times this exponential term. I mean, some constant over another constant is just a constant in itself. Meaning overall, we are going to give this thing a new name, e to the phi conjugate t times y is thus nothing but let's call it kappa one, e to the phi minus phi conjugate times t. After integration, we had a second order differential equation, homogeneous linear one at that. We are going to end up with another constant. We are going to call it kappa two. Okay, after the integration. And all that's left to do is multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of e to the negative phi conjugate times t. It's nothing but the so multiplicative inverse is e to the phi conjugate times t. When we multiply both sides by that, we are going to get the solution to our differential equation y of t being equal to kappa 1. By multiplying both sides by the multiplicative inverse, we are going to get rid of this factor. So e to the first root times t. First root has been phi plus kappa 2 e to the phi conjugate, so second root, times t. And that's the solution to our differential equation. It's the, it's the most general solution, okay? It's not an auxiliary equation, nothing. It's, it's just a complete solution to our linear homogeneous second order differential equation. Ordinary differential equation at that. Yeah, and you can get to the same point using an ansatz. And the ansatz is just some constant times e to both roots that we have times t. And they are already linearly independent. This way you are not going to get a factor of t here. And this is it, my boys and girls out there. I know this has been a little uh, roundabout work, but it's a lot of fun doing it like this. I, you can support the channel this way. And yeah, support the channel also by buying those t-shirts I created. Don't be a third time derivative, okay? <laughs> it's, it's right in the spirit of this video. And well, up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. Ciao! Today, um, I'm using my handy camera right now, my mobile phone camera, because I didn't want to get my real camera on the boat right here because in comparison my mobile phone is worth nothing. Ah, there's a bird. Ah, it's quite beautiful out here. Ah, I'm still wet. Mm. Und ich liebe meinen Schatz. <laughs> Juhu!